Do you miss me at all? Do you think about the things we used to do? No, you couldn't stand tall. So why didn't you, why didn't you call? So many years has gone by. But I think about you, about you all the time. Looks like you're changing and all. But why didn't you, why didn't you call? The condensed version is that Crytek has sued RSI over Star Citizen and Squadron 42. The rest, you'll have to wait. Do you think about the things we used to do? No, you couldn't stand tall. So I didn't. Johnny's Bagels is still there. I don't. I don't. I don't go there. I haven't been there. Sorry. I think it's still there. But I think about you, about you all the time. If we're talking about the same place, Looks that is. Like changing and all. Yeah, I know I'm being drowned out by that why music. It's an introduction. You, why didn't you call? Something in the air, always something in the air. It's an introduction. I know the music is a little high. It will be turned down. Have fun with me. It's over in like 50 seconds. That is a drone in the back. Here, we'll even turn up my volume a little bit. It's laggy. Hello, everyone. How are you this morning? I'm Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney, and we're here to talk about the Star Citizen lawsuit. Yes, I've just turned my audio up a bit too high. Let me turn it back down a little bit. How are we doing? Let's take a moment, and can I get a mic check and a sync check? Is, uh... Is everybody okay? Before we get too far, check one, two. I once knew a Polish audio engineer and a check one, two. All right, everybody. So we're here this morning to talk about the uh, Crytek versus uh, uh, Cloud Imperium Gaming and uh, Robert Space Industries uh, lawsuit here. Oh, there's a whole bunch of attorneys' names on this. Let's just uh, start with um, this view right here. This is the complaint that has been filed in the U.S. District Court for the Central District of California Western Division. Uh, what does all that mean? It means we're in federal court, which means we're skipping any state court stuff. We don't have to worry about too much uh, state court nonsense. Um, there might be. We have to look for state court complaints and, and claims and things inside a federal complaint, but for the most part, we're going to be looking at federal law. Uh, we already know, kind of, if you read the news, that it's a copyright complaint and a breach of contract complaint. Uh, but in case you didn't know, it says it right here, complaint for breach of contract and copyright infringement. Uh, this is case number 8937 in 2017 in uh, the U.S. District Court, Central District of California. 
uh, Crytek GmbH. What is GmbH? Well, that uh, I don't. I forget how to pronounce it or what it stands for, but it is like a corporation or LLC, but in the country of Germany. It's a German corporation. So Crytek is a, a German corporation. Cloud Imperium Games is our defendant, and Robert Space Industries is our other defendant. And the plaintiffs demand a jury trial. So. <clears throat> Getting to the nitty-gritty of this, the plaintiff, Crytek, GmbH, from here on out, just Crytek, brings this complaint against Cloud Imperium Games Corporation and Roberts Space Industries Corporation defendants in support thereof alleges as follows, upon personal knowledge as to itself and upon information belief as to all others. It's more of just a flourishing opening paragraph. It doesn't really mean too terribly much. Nature of the action. This court has exclusive subject matter jurisdiction over this action under uh, U uh, 28 U.S.C. 1331 and 1338A, which are uh, the two statutes that cite uh, the subject matter jurisdiction for copyright and the diversity jurisdiction, which is another this is a thing, it's a term of art. Diver diversity jurisdiction is where you sue somebody in a different state and the amount in controversy exceeds 75,000. They are alleging that it sub substantially exceeds 75,000. So assuming that that's true, there will be no jurisdictional issues. Crytek is an industry-leading video game developer, publisher, and technology provider. It has created some of the most popular and award-winning video game franchises in the world, including Far Cry and Crisis. Crytek is also long renowned for pushing the boundaries of video games with its highly acclaimed Cry Engine, a cutting-edge, powerful, and feature-filled video game developing platform and computer program that provides game developers access to today's most advanced game engine technologies. So I'm sure you're all familiar that developers don't just sit down and write text into a C editor and spit out a game anymore. Most of the time they are developing on top of an already developed engine. The engine is, is more efficient, is been, has been optimized by its independent development team, usually independent development team, and, and then companies go on to create video games separately using that engine. So the Unreal Engine is one of them, um, the Crytek Engine is one of them, the Unity Engine is one of them, and we'll, we'll find out today, if you don't know already, that Amazon has developed its own, sort of, called Amazon Lumberjack. In 2012, defendants sought a devel to develop a new game called Star Citizen. Oh my god, has it been five years already? Which was billed as an epic space adventure trading and dogfighting video game. To make that game a reality, defendants sought to use the Cry Engine video game development platform as its foundation. Crytek and defendants agreed to preliminary license terms, and Crytek invested significant time and expense this is reliance on that contract, in creating impress impressive demonstrations and proofs of concept that were used to persuade the public to contribute financially to the crowdfunding campaign to support development of the video game. As a result of Crytek's efforts, the crowdfunding campaign for Star Citizen was a monumental success, raising over $150 million, a record for video game crowdfunding projects. Now let's just back up a second from there and just remember for a moment that this is the plaintiff speaking. They are using hyperbolic language on purpose in the adversarial U.S. court system. The plaintiff will present their best case and the defendant will present their best case. And each one of them is going to look a little hyperbolic, but, you know, so how much did Crytek's efforts result in raising the $150 million? I don't know. You guys can debate that. I, I actually... I paid attention, but I'm not too deep into Star Citizen or or crowdfunding. I, I, you know, let's actually back up for a second. While I'm on while I'm on full screen here, while I got you, bring it in. Um, so I am. Let's full disclosure here. I did purchase about a sixty or so dollar package to play Star Citizen, and um, still patiently waiting to see what's going to come of 3.0. But other than that, I'm not terribly, terribly invested. So please, no one assign too much weight to, like, my 
opinion on whether Star Citizen is being delayed too long or whether people deserve refunds or whether people should be upset or not be upset or wait longer or not wait longer. I actually don't have a dog in that fight, aside from the fact that I'm patiently waiting to see what comes of my, my small investment. Um, but I'm not really upset about it one way or the other. I've got you guys and, and this and, and all that to worry about, and I'm not, that just doesn't make it onto my radar. Not that it's not meritorious or not meritorious. I just don't know. So, whether or not it was a direct result of Crytek's efforts, I'm not 100% sure. You guys can make that decision or, or, or come to those opinions yourself. Crytek and defendants subsequently formalized their relationship by entering into a game license agreement. In that agreement, defendants promised, among other things, one, to use the CryEngine game development platform exclusively and to promote that platform within the video game. Which I'm assuming that means splash screens and things like that. Two, to collaborate with Crytek on CryEngine development. And three, to take steps to ensure that Crytek's intellectual property was protected. I'm assuming some kind of confidentiality. Defendants have utterly failed to follow through on these promises, and their actions and omissions constitute breaches of contract and copyright infringement and have caused substantial harm to Crytek. By this action, Crytek seeks damages that will fairly and fully compensate it for defendants' breach and infringement. If this relief is not granted, defendants will continue to profit unjustly at Crytek's expense. So, the lawsuit seeks two different kind of, of two different kinds of compensation, remuneration, or restitution. Under contract law, you can really only seek restitution or a remedy for money and an order that makes you whole, that returns you to your your proper position under the agreement. Generally speaking, contracts do not punish people. They can include extra damages, but generally you don't punish people with a contract. However, copyright infringement carries a different set of penalties. In, co- in copyright law, as we'll see, there's, there's statutory damages. Statutory means by law. And damages by law means damages are set by law, not set by the judge. And in copyright law, those damages are a sort of sentencing guideline. It's not criminal, but it's a, a, a guideline of anywhere from $750 per infringement to $150,000 per infringement, depending upon how willful and the facts of the, of the, of the infringement. So those are two different kinds of damages that they're discussing there. Uh, Plaintiff Crytek is a German corporation with its principal place of business in Frankfurt, Germany. It is, at all relevant times, has been the owner of a copyright. They did attach that. It's here as Exhibit A or whatever. Um, I downloaded it, but we're not going to go over that. Apologies if you want to see what a copyright registration looks like. It's, it's, uh, they're all over the place. Um, it's just a registration is just a certificate that says that you paid the 25 or $35 fee and filed the right paperwork. It doesn't anything mean anything else it's just a step that they have to do so we're not really fighting over whether cry engine is copyrighted or not we're fighting over whether uh, sig and rsi have used the cry engine in violation of copyright defendant cloud imperium games is a corporation registered in delaware and does principal place of business in los angeles california Robert Space Industries is also Delaware and does business in in Los Angeles, California. The court has jurisdiction because copyright is a federal question and there is also diversity of citizenship here, which are two, two separate ways that you can get jurisdiction in federal court. Um, they go in to just cite what makes the jurisdictional requirements here, just the places and the over $75,000 of of controversy. There's nothing detailed in there as far as the actual controversy. Facts giving rise to this action. Chris Roberts, a video game designer, and Ortwin Friermuth, an entertainment lawyer, founded Defendants. On October 10th, 2012, Defendants initiated a crowdfunding campaign to raise money for Star Citizen, a game to be developed by Defendants. At significant time and expense, Crytek created demonstrations and proofs of concept for Defendants related to Star Citizen, and Defendants used those materials as part of the crowdfunding campaign. 
So Crytek claims that they were directly involved with the crowdfunding campaign for Star Citizen. On November 20th, 2012, Crytek and defendants entered into a game license agreement with Crytek. The GLA was extensively negotiated. Negotiations on behalf of defendants were led by Friar Muth. In prior years, Friar Muth also represented Crytek in negotiations of similar license agreements with third parties. Notwithstanding that he had confidential information that would unfairly advantage defendants, Friar Muth never recused himself from those negotiations and never resolved that conflict of interest with Crytek. The negotiations on behalf of Crytek were led by Carl Jones, then an employee of Crytek. Jones later left Crytek and became an employee of defendants. Under the GLA, defendants agreed to pay Crytek a license fee for access to and use of CryEngine in the Star Citizen video game. Crytek agreed to charge defendants a below-market license rate for CryEngine in exchange for defendants' agreement that they would, among other things, prominently display Crytek trademarks and copyright notices in the Star Citizen video game and related marketing materials. Having met their initial funding target and hoping to raise further contributions from the public, defendants added additional stretch goals to their crowdfunding campaign and made further use of Crytek's materials in that process. Defendants promised to expand the scope of the crowdfunding project whenever each stretch goal was reached, and those expanded promises successfully induced additional funding contributions from the public. Defendants raised over $50 million by 2014, over $100 million by 2015, and over 150 million earlier this year. Star Citizen has hit a record for video game crowdfunding projects and is one of the highest funded crowdfunding campaigns of all time. Yeah, I think it might be. Yet, even as funding for Defendant's campaign reached new heights, Defendant's breached several promises they made to Crytek in the GLA and infringed Crytek's copyrights in the CryEngine computer program. Defendants are developing a separate game using CryEngine without permission. Section 212 of the GLA contained a promise by defendants to use CryEngine for the development of only one video game. During the negotiation of the terms of the GLA, Crytek made it clear that the game license would not cover anything more. Section 212 of the GLA expressly states that SIG has a license only to embed CryEngine in the game and develop the game. The GLA limits the use of the CryEngine computer program to a single video game called Star Citizen. Exhibit 2 of the GLA states... Okay, Exhibit 2 not Section 2, Exhibit 2, of the GLA states that the game does not include any content being sold and marketed separately, such as content sold and marketed as a separate standalone PC game. And those are quotes, so those appear to be quotes directly from the game license agreement, that the game does not include any content being sold separately and such content sold and marketed, uh, or, or such content marketed as a separate standalone PC game. On December 16th, 2015, defendants announced Squadron 42, a single-player video game involving space combat, which would be sold separately from Star Citizen. On January 29th, 2016, defendants made a further public announcement about Squadron 42, 42 uh, stating that it would be made available for purchase as a standalone video game. On February 5th, 2016, Crytek notified defendants that their plan to distribute Squadron 42 as a standalone game was not covered by the GLA license, because the GLA did not grant defendants a license to embed CryEngine in any game other than Star Citizen. On February 14, 2016, defendants moved forward with their plan for Squadron 42, notwithstanding their failure to obtain a license, and began offering the video game for separate purchase. As a result, defendants are intentionally and willfully using CryEngine without a license and in violation of copyright laws. On December 23, 2016, in reference to Star Citizen and Squadron 42, defendants announced that both games are currently in development and backed by a record-breaking 139 million crowd-funded effort. Which is an interesting way to say that, because they are there, they're saying that it's both games are being funded by the money for Star Citizen. Which, you know, this, this is an arguable point. Is Star Citizen and Squadron 42 part of the same effort? By the same company, under the same crowdfunding campaign? Are they separate games? Are they separate modules of the same game? I think all of this is going to be argued about in court. 
Crytek has not been compensated for defendants' unlicensed use of Crytek technology in the Squadron 42 game and has been substantially harmed by being deprived of that compensation, which would ordinarily include a substantial upfront payment as well as a substantial royalty on game sales. Defendants removed Crytek trademarks and copyright notices from their games and marketing materials without permission. Other sections of the GLA 2.8 1, 2, and 3 contain promises by defendants that they would prominently display Crytek's trademarks and copyrights in the Star Citizen video game and related marketing materials. The GLA expressly states that the quote splash screen, credit screen, documentation, and packaging, if any, as well as marketing material shall include Crytek's copyright notice. Section 282 further states, quote, splash screen, credit screen, documentation, packaging, as well as marketing material shall prominently display both the Crytek and CryEngine trademarks. And 283 states that any changes must be in writing with Crytek's prior approval with a 10-day approval period. In accordance with those provisions, the Star Citizen video game initially contained a splash screen that included Crytek's trademarks and copyright notices. Defendants no knew Crytek's right to display its trademark and copyright notices in the video game and related materials was a critical component of the GLA, yet by at least September 24, 2016, defendants' co-founder Chris Roberts publicly sought to minimize Crytek's contribution to Star Citizen, stating that, quote, We don't call the video game engine CryEngine anymore, we call it Star Engine. Shortly thereafter, defendants removed Crytek trademarks and copyright notices from the Star Citizen video game, and related marketing materials in breach of the GLA. The licensing fee negotiated under the GLA reflected a substantial reduction of Crytek's usual licensing fees in view of the promotional consideration and other consideration that defendants promised to Crytek in those sections of the agreement. In view of the fact that Crytek has been deprived of that promised consideration, Crytek has been substantially damaged and has failed to receive the balance of its full usual license fee. Defendants broke its promise to exclusively use CryEngine for the game. Section 212 contained a critical promise from defendants that they would not develop the Star Citizen video game using any other video game engines. Section 212 states that defendants have a license only to exclusively embed CryEngine in the game. On December 23rd, 2016, defendants announced that they were that they were using the Amazon Lumberyard video game engine for Star Citizen. The GLA did not permit defendants to use any other video game engine in Star Citizen except for CryEngine. Crytek has been damaged by defendants' breach of Section 212, including for the reason that Crytek has failed to receive the benefit of the favorable attention that it otherwise would have desired or derived from defendants' use of CryEngine in Star Citizen. Defendants broke its promise to collaborate on CryEngine development. Section 7.3 of the GLA contained a promise that defendants would provide bug fixes and optimizations on an annual basis. Quote, annually during the game's development period and again upon publication of the final game, licensee shall provide Crytek with any bug fixes and optimizations made to the CryEngine's original source code files as a complete compilable version. On November 2016, uh, excuse me, November 16, 2015, Crytek requested long overdue bug fixes and optimizations from defendants. Defendants did not make a good faith effort to provide Crytek with the promised bug fixes and optimizations to the CryEngine as a complete compilable version. November 24, 2016, Crytek informed defendants they were in breach. Although defendants claimed that they were ready and willing to comply, they did not comply. On June 22, 2017, Crytek sent another letter to defendants, again requesting the bug fixes and optimizations. To date, defendants have not made a good faith effort to provide Crytek with the promised bug fixes and optimizations as a complete compilable version. Crytek has been damaged by defendants' breach, including for the reason that defendants have failed to provide the technology to Crytek that they promised and has not benefited from use of that technology. Defendants disclosed CryEngine technology to third parties. Sections 221, 222, and 26 of the GLA contain a promise by defendants that they would keep the underlying technology for CryEngine, including source code, confidential and not share it with anyone else without first disclosing that third party and obtaining prior written approval. 
221 states, quote, shall not publish or distribute the CryEngine in any way, be it in source or object code. 222 states that defendants shall not use CryEngine in any manner which may disclose the CryEngine source code or proprietary information to any third party. 26 requires the prior written approval. On May 6, 2015, defendants began posting a series of videos online titled Bug Smashers. The video contains excerpts of information from CryEngine that were confidential in breach of the GLA and should not have been shown to the public. The series continues today. On October on August 26, 2017, news reports announced a partnership between defendant and a third-party developer, Faceware Technologies. Upon information and belief, Faceware received access to the underlying technology for CryEngine. Defendants did not disclose this third-party developer's involvement to Crytek, let alone obtain Crytek's written approval. It was entirely in breach of the GLA. Crytek has been damaged, etc. Counts 1. Breach of Contract the GLA constitutes a writing to which defendant was a party. The GLA limits the use of CryEngine computer program to a single video game called Star Citizen. Defendants breach the GLA by using CryEngine to market, develop, and incentivize funding for more than one game, thereby enriching itself millions of dollars without paying for such use. Defendants further breach the GLA by refusing to provide agreed-upon annual bug fixes and optimizations to CryEngine. Defendants further breached the GLA, among other things, by removing cry text, trademarks, and copyright notices. Defendants further breached the GLA by breaking its promise to exclusively use CryEngine. Crytek has suffered and will continue to suffer. Copyright infringement. Crytek is a copyright holder in the CryEngine computer program. Defendants have reproduced, displayed, and distributed unauthorized copies of the CryEngine computer program to which they had access. Such unauthorized copies exceed the permissible license terms and therefore constitute unlawful reproduction, display, and distribution of the CryEngine computer program. Defendants' acts violate the exclusive rights of Crytek as the copyright holder to reproduce, display, distribute CryEngine computer program, etc., as set forth in 17 U.S.C. Section 106, which are the enumerated copyrights. Crytek is informed and believes, uh, thereon alleges, that the infringement of Crytek's copyright was willful, reckless, or in blatant disregard for their rights. As such, they claim willful, exemplary, enhanced statutory, and uh, or a preclusion from claiming certain deductions or other benefits during a calculation of damages. Defendants' infringement of Crytek's copyrights are the direct and proximate cause of damages to Crytek, and Crytek is entitled to compensatory damages in an amount to be determined at trial. Crytek is further entitled to recover from defendants all the gains, profits, and advantages that they have obtained as a result of the infringement and for disgorgement of any additional gains, profits, advantages defendants obtained that are attributable to their infringement of the CryEngine computer program. And the amount to be proven at trial. And attorney's fees. Prayer for relief. Direct damages. Indirect damages. Consequential damages. Special damages. Costs. Fees. Expenses. Everything, basically. Entering a permanent injunction, enjoining and restraining defendants from continuing to possess or use the copyrighted work, and a, prelu and a preliminary and permanent injunction requiring defendants and all those acting in concert from infringing and encouraging uh, infr the, using the copyrighted work. Awarding actual damages and disgorgement of profits in an amount to be determined at trial, together with interest, attorneys' fees, and costs. Punitive damages in an amount to be determined at trial. All remedies provided for under 17 U.S.C. 504, which I believe are other fee-shifting provisions under the copyright law, and granting other such further relief as equities of the case may require. Actually, I wonder, uh, 17 U.S.C. 504 might not be the one I was thinking of. It might be 505. Let me see what 504 is. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of. It is. It's the uh, it's the remedy. It's the uh, various. Um, damages, ac actual damages versus statutory damages. So that is then signed by the attorneys for Crytek, and a jury trial has been demanded. And that is the complaint. So what do we think of that? Well, let me tell you a few things about what I think of it. They are claiming these very hyperbolic things that may sound a little bit too hyperbolic, and you may need to know about this. They're claiming a disgorgement of all profits, a, 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 a preliminary injunction to prohibit further copyright infringement, etc., etc., etc. 
None of that means that Star Citizen is getting shut down. None of that means that Star Citizen is going to go bankrupt or Robert Space or SIG is going to go bankrupt. And hopefully none of them start claiming anything like that from this because, well, that's a different concern. Um, what what they mean is provable damages or provable damage caused by the infringement. So if, if Star Citizen has switched over to Amazon Lumberjack, yes, maybe that is a breach of the contract. So the judge will help determine and the jury will help determine how much money was supposed to go to Crytek, would have gone to Crytek, and they will try to m make Crytek whole, whatever that amount of money is. That's a very complicated process, and it's going to require a lot of court uh, litigation, would be the word I would use, a lot of probably protracted litigation. It is possible to get these kinds of things done quickly if the parties can agree on some of the background stuff, but it doesn't appear that these parties are agreeing. So... How much that money will be, I'm not sure. It's probably not going to be all the money. It's probably going to be the provable amount of money that Crytek can show they were actually damaged, possibly times an amount for either costs or for any bad faith acting or anything like that. Now, one of the interesting things that I came across that I wasn't sure really what to do with when I first saw it here is that Amazon Lumberyard, which is free, does actually include technology from CryEngine. So while that doesn't change the fact that, that CryEngine was licensed exclusively for Star Citizen, I wonder what SIGs and RSI's response is going to be, defendants, what their response is going to be to having switched from CryEngine through Crytek to using CryEngine through Amazon. That that almost seems like right there will be some kind of provable amount of money, that there was fee and, and things that CryEngine would normally or Crytek would normally have charged. Not only did they get a discount on that engine, but then they said, we're done with you and we moved on to Amazon Lumberyard. If... Star Citizen had stayed with CryEngine, with Crytek, and if Squadron 42 had gone straight to Amazon Lumberyard, I wonder if there would even be a dispute here, because what's what they're saying is happening is that Crytek's CryEngine got used in both Star Citizen and then Squadron 42. Squadron 42 is a separate game, so that's a breach. Um, then they switch Star Citizen over to Amazon Lumberyard, which is also a breach. And they're still using Crytek's CryEngine in this, which is then further breach. I'm concerned, though, about the copyright infringement claim. It will be kind of easy for defendants, Star Citizen and RSI, to come back and say, oh, no, no, this is not a breach of, con of, of, of copyright, this is a breach of the contract only. We misunderstood something, or we thought that, that this was licensed under this. Th the judge might agree and might only award contract damages, which, like I said, are not the exorbitant copyright damages sometimes, are not the... Uh, are not the range of 750 to 150,000 and uh, this doesn't involve a that kind of calculation instead it involves a, an actual calculation of actual damages and then the judge will decide whether that gets multiplied or the jury will decide what that amount of money is or something like that so this might not be the strongest copyright claim I'm not saying it won't. It does sort of seem like they violated their their agreement with Crytek. When you have a contract, contracts are based on bargained for consideration, and it seems like they bargained, and it seems like they were both providing consideration. Uh, Crytek gets paid a smaller amount of money, and in return they get some marketing through through the 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 Star Citizen game and, and marketing materials and packaging and stuff like that. And if they really did give a discount and, and then Star Citizen defendants did not 
follow through with their promises under the agreement, then yeah, that's a breach of contract and they will have to pay some kind of money or something like that or anything like that. They're claiming that CryEngine's copyright was used within the game, was used within RSI, was used within Star Citizen um, development, and, and as, as therefore their copyrights are in the game because it's their engine running the game. If only they would take all of that out, uh, then, then they can continue to, to run the game. What really happens in cases like this is a complaint like this gets made and let, let, let me do a little bit of reading between the lines here let's go back to the complaint this complaint is only 15 pages long it does not contain huge long details it did not contain 32 exhibits it is just beyond what i would consider a bare bones complaint it is it, it, it is the very quintessence of what I would call federal notice pleading. What does all that mean? So this is a pleading, this is a complaint. We're in the pleading stage of the of the of the lawsuit. The pleadings are the complaint, any response or answer, um, and maybe some objections or something like that. When you're done with the complaint and objections and maybe a motion to dismiss and an answer, then you are closed with the pleadings and you're into the discovery stage. So pleadings have a standard for pleading, which means the amount of detail you need. Let's let's compare the end of a case to the beginning of a case. At the end of a case, you need to be able to prove your damages. At the end of a case, you need to be able to call your witnesses to the stand. But here at the beginning of the case, you might not have all those details. You definitely know something happened to you, something's wrong, You're, you've got enough to bring a case, but you don't know all the nitty-gritty details, and you're going to prove those along the way, and you're even going to have a chance to to get relevant information from the opposing side, and vice versa, along the way. So we're at the pleading stage. This is the complaint. The standard for pleading in federal court is what we call notice pleading. There's two or possibly more standards for pleading. Notice pleading and fact pleading are the major ones. Fact pleading is where you have to set out the very details of your allegation, and notice pleading is where you have to set out only enough details to put the opposing side on notice of your claim. So the difference there is if I, let's say I had a minor car collision and I was going to sue somebody over my 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 neck. I I got a whiplash. I got whiplash, and my neck was injured. And I'm going to sue somebody. In fact, pleading, I might have to say, I was driving along. I stopped at the red light. I was stationary at the red light. I saw a car proceeding, not stopping. It hit me, etc., etc., etc. I was injured. In notice pleading, I can say, I drove this car, there was a vehicle accident on this day, yes, such and such was, was at fault because of this reason, and here are my damages. What's the difference? It's subtle, but in the, se in the first one, you had to put out all the facts. In the second one, you only have to tell the story enough to, that, the, that the judge would agree that the recipient, the defendant, knows what you're talking about knows that, yes, okay, we're talking about the car accident on November, on November whatever. Here, we're talking about the breach of contract with Star Citizen and RSI. It really couldn't be made any more clear while also being this brief. So that's sort of what the point of the notice pleading standard is. So what does that mean to me? Why am I going on and on about this? Well, this is a short, barely... Not, not even, barely is a little bit too bare. It's a little bit more than barely, but it's really not fleshed out. It's, it's not a very long complaint. It tells the story and gets out. It's, it's brief. It's, it's, it's perfectly brief. And actually, I commend the attorneys for writing it this brief, but I know what they're doing. At least I think I know what they're doing. I don't think that they're interested in taking this case to trial. I think they're interested in getting Star Citizen, RSI, SIG, uh, to, to pay out some kind of settlement fee 
in for the breach, and then they'll go away. I, I honestly think this is just going to be a matter of negotiating with them and trying to avoid trial. How much brinksmanship the plaintiff is willing to play will will certainly determine a lot about how things go. But um, for the va- for the for the most part, I think this is a there is a breach here. I'm not saying it's a frivolous lawsuit. I'm saying this is a genuine lawsuit that I think the plaintiff does not want to actually go to trial. I think they want to 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 settle. Um, I see someone saying that Crytek is broke. I have no idea if that's true or not. I don't think um, I don't see why they would be broke. Their their engine, I think, is doing okay, although Unreal seems to be running a lot of games these days. Unity seems to be running a lot of games these days. Only know of a couple games that run on CryEngine, so I'm really not entirely sure what the status of Crytek is right now. So, you guys can debate in chat how much you think Crytek is or is not making some kind of money grab here, but even if they're making a money grab... Without seeing defendant's response, which could be a completely different story, uh, without seeing defendant's response, these do seem like breaches of contract. But then again, I don't think a, a reputable law firm would bring a claim like this without having done their due diligence and researched and made sure that there actually was some kind of color of a claim here, some legally recognized claim here. So what is this? This is one side of the story, and now we have to wait for the other side. I did see in my um, point, I do have a very short response that, uh, that SIG and RSI came back with. Their official statement, which I, um, I can't bring up on the screen here because I'm dumb and I didn't prepare that, But the official statement from SIG is that uh, we are aware of the Crytek complaint having been filed in the U.S. District Court. SIG hasn't used the CryEngine for quite some time since we switched to Amazon's Lumberyard. This is a meritless lawsuit that we will defend vigorously against, including recovering from Crytek any costs incurred in this matter. That's a pretty boilerplate response. Of course, they're going to respond and seek maximum retribution or whatever. But we are talking about Crytek versus Amazon at this point, depending upon how much Amazon wants Star Citizen. Uh, Jeff Bezos may be very interested in making sure that Star Citizen goes untouched, and maybe Crytek wants to be paid for that. Uh, Or maybe Crytek really has been terribly, terribly damaged and really needs to recover from the injury it's received from the breach of its exclusive arrangement with Star Citizen. So... Svining Turistol, thank you very much for the Norwegian kroner. Cytec is known as struggling. This is a legitimate complaint, I'm sure, but it's obvious that they'd want a settlement instead of a long case while strapped for cash. So yeah, the, that is definitely a, a possibility. Um, and thank you very much for your support. Uh, speaking of, although Patreon has reversed their uh, their, their course on their things... Most of my videos on YouTube are now getting demonetized. I don't think you saw anything in here that was not ad-friendly, so if you are so inclined, please feel free to visit me at patreon.com slash ljfrench, or you can uh, paypal.me slash ljfrench if you would like to donate and support the cause. This is now my day job. Uh, There is no one else supporting this other than you supporters and the YouTube income and such, so I really appreciate your help. That personal ad break aside, we're not ending the stream yet, um, I do want to look at chat. Now, I am aware that there has been a lot of activity in chat today, and if I am not um, responding directly to many of the things and allegations that are in chat, it's mostly because I don't actually know both sides of of you guys. I don't know the side that is really upset with Star Citizen being delayed. I do realize that Star Citizen is delayed, and I do have my own personal feelings about this. Um, Particularly, and let me just share this, and I don't mean this in any real vitriolic manner here, but according to this schedule, 
other dates seem to have been met. 2.6 was released within a week of its target or something. Uh, 2.62 was released with you know on its target or something. But I've I bought into this during the 3.0 hype, and I'm still waiting for 3.0, and it's now five five months later. So I, I think people have legitimate reasons to be concerned. I just don't know. I'm, I, I don't have a dog in the fight, is really all that I'm saying. So, there's definitely lots of, th- of other things that can be complained about. It's a video game, after all. We know you can find anything to complain about. I've, I've complained about I've, more petty things than this. So, um, I, I really couldn't talk about that. But I would like to hear from you guys. I'm going to pay attention to chat now. And we do have slow mode on. Apologize for that. But it uh, makes it so much easier for me to actually read the chat. I do have a dog. I have two dogs. They are out in the backyard right now. They really, really enjoy this cold weather. It's about negative uh, 5C here, about 23 degrees, and going down to about 15 degrees tonight, about negative 9C? I don't know. Math is hard. It's also like a 1.9, you know, ratio or whatever. Nine-fifths or something. Anyway. (laughs) Skyrim was 10 years in development. See, the, the problem with the crowdfunding model is that now instead of having one or two impatient investors or even 10 impatient investors, you have thousands of impatient investors. So it's not exactly making your your job any easier. Um, however, I much prefer to have the support of hundreds of people on, you know, I'm sorry, shameless plug again, but I... I I prefer to have the support of hundreds of people rather than one job that I can lose at any given moment. I'm sure that I could lose this job quickly, but I would have to do some really terrible things. Okay, so somebody has a question. Can I speak more about Amazon coming to save the day? Uh, I don't know if they're saving the day or just trying to profit off of the thing. Uh, Amazon put together Lumberyard, it looks like, as a combination of a game development engine, a uh, the Amazon Web Services industry, Twitch, which is a game streaming platform, and I don't even know what Double Helix is. Somebody tell me what uh, Amazon's Double Helix is. Um, which, of course, you can't just search Double Helix. A personal account... Oh, wait, no, that's 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 a book about DNA. <laughs> I really have no idea what Double Helix is. As it, Double Helix Games? Oh, it's a game studio. Okay, so they bought a game studio. So, basically, Amazon is trying to buy its way into the game development business. Which, oh, heck, I would do that. I'm... I'm trying to become a voice actor in Star Mazer and Star Mazer DS. Actually, I'm not trying to become. I hear it's scheduled, but uh, I'm not counting my chickens. And, uh, you know, I will be pleasantly surprised when that happens. So, uh, but yes, I understand that, that that is scheduled. And even I am getting into the video games industry. So uh, this is all very exciting. But um, I could not tell you whether Star Citizen is being saved by Amazon or not. I honestly, it it could be that Star Citizen is going to be that great of a game. It could also be that we're all being fooled and someone is spending all the money that they're getting as quickly as possible or whatever and then is somehow going to disappear. I'm not saying that's what's happening here. However, I was a Kickstarter backer for the Peachy Printer and my $119 went to build a house in Canada and I don't really get any of that money back. I uh, I didn't I didn't try to get the money back honestly but but the the final word well I did try to get a little bit of the the final word was that I was going to have to do a chargeback with my bank and and bought into it like 3 years ago I didn't even think you could do a chargeback with the bank from 3 years ago I just haven't put the time into trying to figure that out so it's all good I don't know whether uh Kickstarter you know Kickstarter is, is, is 
a great, the crowd, I mean crowdfunding, but crowdfunding is a great idea, is a great concept, and has had, uh, we even crowdfunded the, the, the Imagos defense in the Imagos case, and you guys were great, and, and donated $18,890. And hopefully we don't need any more, right? We have a hearing on Monday, and that should be the end of that case. But we'll see. Um, this is just the beginning of this case. This is just one side of the case, and we have not heard what SIG's response is yet. They could be... It could have violated their, their, their agreement, or maybe there's some more to the story. It's possible that we won't hear the end of it, that we will that this will be quietly settled, and we'll hear that it's over. And somebody will report, somebody like me might report that the case has been dismissed. That that also might happen. So it could be that this is the beginning, or it could be that this is just the public side of a much more private dispute. And we'll, we, we, we might not see much. After all, this is Jeff Bezos we're talking about. Jeff Bezos, head of Amazon, does not like terrible... Uh, uh, press or, or, or public relations. So if there really has been some kind of violation, it will be probably privately acknowledged and settled quickly. If not, then we might have an epic copyright slash breach of contract case. But of course, epic is a different game studio, so maybe I shouldn't use that term. Anyway, update in the Alex Mauer case. Yeah, we'll have an update probably after Monday. Um, we have a hearing on Monday. Alex has sent a handwritten note to the judge. Why it's handwritten, I really have no idea. Alex uses a computer, but whatever. Um, the handwritten note said that the that that Alex had thought that the judge would invalidate the settlement because Alex owns copyrights to things with uh, with Turner Broadcasting, and that's it. That's all it said. It didn't say what things, and it didn't say how her owning that copyright registration, how, how that changes anything. Uh, a copyright registration does not actually mean you own anything. It means you paid $25 and filed the paperwork with the copyright office and waited six months. That's it. That's really all that that means. So anyway, so that is the show. I want to thank you for joining me. I would also like to thank my December supporters. Um, currently, we are. Well, let me let me actually bring them up here. That would probably help. Currently, I am working on final on the final edit of the Milwaukee versus Snap On Tools video, which was from November. Uh, you may remember that A V E, the uh, Arduino evil gentleman who likes to make those shop videos, he sponsored the channel for five hundred dollars and uh, asked us to make that video. In December, our $500 sponsor is DJ Gilcrease, and I'm um, looking forward to hearing from him as to what video he'd like to see me make. Our $50 plus supporters are John Steele, Lydia Collinson, Weston Loney, Gavin Barnard, The God Slain, and Sean McNamara. My $5 plus supporters are scrolling on my LED panel behind me and are in the description below. Oh, great, and the net neutrality vote just went live, so I think I'm going to stop the stream here and we'll go watch that, because that would be great. Cases like this can go on for years, so who knows? This will be either short or long. I hope... Uh, I don't know. How long does SIG have to respond? SIG will, will have to respond after they get served within 21 days. It's probably going to be a few weeks or months before they respond. So, thank you very much. And uh, what is the, do uh, you want me to link to the FCC? Yeah, sure. Uh, live net neutrality vote. Where, yeah, somebody, here's how to watch, okay. FCC general live, here it is. All right, everybody. Have a great one. Yeah, rip net neutrality, probably, but we'll see. All right, I love you all. Thanks for joining me. Have a great week. Have a great holiday. I will see you in other videos, but I'm sure I won't see you all. So have a great holiday, everyone. By I'll see you when I see you. Love you. Bye. Oh, yeah, Blue and I'm Leonard Act, French, which was your favorite copyright attorney. By President Obama Thank you. In 2015.